I was expecting a mold uh, monster to be in here, but apparently it doesn't count. Whoa! Okay, never mind. I lied. It's all mold. Hello, and welcome back to my playthrough of Control. This is going to be part 9. We're just going to do some more of these side quests before moving on with the main story. I'm actually going to cut around for a lot of this, I think. Because it's relatively repetitive and not so interesting in my book. Hello, how'd I miss you? Recording chair procedures. Before using the recording devices, please ensure the following secure, uh, safety measures are met. Ensure the volunteer is securely fastened in their chair. Ensure the hood is placed over the volunteer's head. This will prevent the volunteer from taking in visual stimuli during the rec record process, which can lower the quality of the captured footage. I'm going to assume without reading the rest of it, this is about the astral plane. This also prevents recording technicians from viewing the volunteer's face, which undergoes muscle spasms during recording that some consider upsetting. Check if the volunteer is comfortable. Activate the recording apparatus. After recording is complete, check volunteer cognitive ability using the provided questionnaire. Do not be alarmed if the length of recorded footage exceeds the volunteer's period of unconsciousness. Astral dilation is a known issue. Yeah, makes sense. Dreaming. If any problems arise during this process, contact your supervisor. Precognitive powers. Nadine, send this to research for analysis. RE, my precognitive powers. Urgent, Dr. Darling. Last night I had a dream. In the dream, I was given the solution to a staffing problem I'd been presented with just yesterday. The problem is of a confidential nature and must therefore remain unclarified here. But I can assure you that the method through I received this helpful information was undeniably paranatural. I can only draw the conclusion that I possess exceptional precognitive abilities and as such offer my services to the Bureau's research teams. We must utilize my powers for the greater good. Signed, Mr. Francis Bertram. There is actually a little fun story I have um, about a personal experience that I've had a few times about that kind of thing. Is this mold? This looks moldy. Kinda moldy. Yep, 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 you're mold. Uh. Yep. Okay, I just need to find a few more. Dr. Tokui? Tokui? Uh, investigation. Dr. Yoshimi Tokui, a Japanese citizen residing in Tokyo has produced a series of guided imagery experience audio recordings that have gained notable popularity around the globe. Due to his unusually swift rise to fame, along with reports of vivid blanks uh, accompanying the use of his tapes, investigation sector staff were asked to look into Dr. Tokui's background. We found no past incident with an altered occurrence, nor any evidence of involvement with an altered organization. There are altered organizations? That's new information. However, agents that attended a signing event reported blank when hearing Dr. Tokui speak. We recommend that the research team obtain an audio recording of Dr. Tokui's voice and perform any and all relevant analyses. Based on the findings, the investigation sector will determine next steps regarding Dr. Tokui as well as his eligibility for the Prime Candidate Program. Okay. So there's two more mold posts out here somewhere. Sensory tank purpose. Darling here, some of you were curious why I had those sensory deprivation tanks installed. I thought I'd shed some light on the project. Maybe some of you have heard of a Dr. Doshimi Tokui, the man behind the hugely popular guided imagery experience tapes. Apparently, his tapes go beyond the normal meditative qualities of such things, but create genuine hallucinatory visions in some listeners, or so the reports say. We brought these tanks in to test Dr. Tokui's tapes for ourselves. Plus, there may be stress, some stress-relieving uses for the staff down the road. I think we could all benefit from some time in a dark and closed space, don't you? If you have any more questions, feel free to stop by my office. You know where it is. Okay. Oh, here's another one. Thank you. 
Whoops. Oh, this is supposed to be the pyramid. Okay. That's funny. To make it feel more at home than the astral plane? Intriguing. Okay. So it's a pretend... Uh, I see. It's a pretend um, astral plane. Got it. I think I already had that control point. So there might be more mold up here. Oh, yep. Okay. Alright. Clear. Now to the ritual division. Or central research. It doesn't really matter where I go. Apparently there's some countermeasures here. Thank you. Dodge efficiency again. Uh, I'll toss them. I'm going to toss all the incursion ones that require me to... Yeah, that require me to kill specific item or enemies within a specific area. Because I don't really care. Yeah, That's too restrictive for me, I think. So, research. Do, 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 do. Central research. Can I upgrade my gear? I can. Um, I'm down to upgrade my grip. Yes. I could upgrade Pierce, but I never use it. Okay, what am I going to put on here? Rate of fire boost. Do I really care about that, though? Ammo cost while levitating. Can't say I do. Headshot damage seems good, but I already have headshot damage. So does it stack? It looks like it stacks. I mean, I'm not sure though. I'll stick with it and find out, I guess. Um, I'm looking at this and it's telling me I should probably dump some gear. Uh, so I will toss all the level twos. Cause I'm at the point where I just keep getting level fours and level threes. All right. So central research need to find more, more mold. Hello. Is this one of those invisible guys? It is. It is. What the heck? I should dip. I am going to dip. Okay. I know the invisible boy is alive. Dead. Okay. That was good, but central research is huge. Oh, there's mold down here, though. In the bathroom. Hello. Okay. So that's one of three. Yeah, this area is huge. Also, I still never figured out the ashtray maze, or all that area to the right. Hubert, Black Rock Analysis. Hi, Carla. Does it strike you as odd that Darling insists on having us appear in those bizarre videos of his? I mean, we just stand there. He doesn't even let us have lines or anything. Don't get me wrong. Beats a day in the lab. Plus, it's always great to work with you. Oh, yeah. I finished the comparative analysis of the two Black Rock samples you sent. The prism, or whatever you called it. I filed them in the usual place under C for Carla. A handy mnemonic device, right? Haha. <laughs> anyway, let me know if there's anything you want to discuss over the data about the data. I'll gladly explain. Maybe we could chat about it over some drinks or dinner even. Right. I can't remember the last time I had a good steak. Maybe we could go together after work sometime? I'm free tomorrow. All the very best, Hubert. Well, I hope it worked out, cause I don't think anything else did around. Here. Uh, maybe through this area. Yep, I do see some molds. You're gonna be in here. Hello, buddy. 
Bye, buddy. I threw that into... I threw that so hard it went into the table. Or into the door. Right, the music plays. Okay. Just need one more. Already been down here. It's kind of creepy. Somehow I missed that. Synchronicity. A glimpse into the paranormal synchronicity and the unseen connections. Synchronicity is a phenomenon long recognized by the wise, but only recently given a name by science. It is how we rationalize events connected by no identifiable causality, yet clearly conjoined in purpose. How does a dream foretell an event in the physical plane? Why do hounds bail at the death of their master, which has occurred miles away? The world is unified in ways we do not yet understand, and sometimes we stumble upon these invisible, unseen cores and wonder at the result. The visionary Carl Jung laid the road. Now we must walk it. My fledgling research department will make it our mission to reliably reproduce blank behavior by the close of 1959. Once done, the mechanics of synchronicity will lay themselves bare in due time. We are striding into the future of science. History may not remember our names, but God himself will. And this is penned by Dr. Ash, head of research. Got it? Is that like a bedroom? Also, could you like stop blocking the path thing? Oops. Thank you. Yeah, that's like a, a bedroom. It's kind of weird. Hello, area that was previously unreachable. Thank you. Oh, there is mold up here. There's mold up here, I see it. Release articles, okay. There be mold. So it's in here somewhere. Yeah, it's in there, okay. Darling, Underhill Disagreement. Dear Dr. Darling, I feel I must inform you of the very uncomfortable uh, uh, of the very questionable documentation I am seeing from Dr. Underhill's desk. She clearly has no concept of what the mold is. She claims they are microorganisms responsible for constructing the mold. Ridiculous. It's a rapidly growing fungus, not dissimilar to kudzu. I don't know what that is. She's fabricating complexity to justify her absurd, her absurd budget demands. Speaking of which, I find it interesting that an old friend of yours gets her budget approved with no questions asked. I wonder if the Operations of Oversight Committee would be interested to learn of that. Here's an estimation, Dr. Lewis. Okay. Funding dispute. Can't be bothered with that. No thank you. Oh. It's fuzzy in here, I'll say that. Does it hurt in here? It does not. Where's the mold? You're in here somewhere, clearly. Not currently sure, but let me read this. Hammer procedures. Game hammer. I've seen this in, uh, in the area with the rest of the altered items. Note, per archival mandates 8.A, this document has been edited to meet current administrative standards. Certain terminology may be out of date. No method of suppressing the item's thaumatur thaumaturgical effect is yet known to prevent infection where proper safety gloves while handling. The item is a wooden mallet from a High Striker Carnival game. A long wooden handle extends past the head. The item infects any organic material with an unknown disease upon making physical contact. The effects of this disease are similar to leprosy, but develop at a much faster rate. Within a matter of days, tissue loss develops in the limbs closest to the point of infection. While the disease itself has not claimed any lives, secondary infection has resulted in numerous deaths. Intriguing. I don't like how this place is, uh, is smoggy and um, moldy. And I have yet to see the actual hidden location discovered. Really? Oh, so this doesn't count as the mold. I was expecting a mold uh, monster to be in here, but apparently it doesn't count. Whoa! Okay, never mind. I 
I lied. It's all mold. Help me out, please. Okay. It's all mold here. I lied. I think we're clear. Um, but let me toss some more of this gear. So, I killed all of those, and that still did not count, apparently. That was not good enough. Uh, I'm gonna toss all the level 1s, of which I don't have many, so level 2s are going now. I'm not even gonna look at what they are. Just see level 2, toss level 2. Okay, yeah, so apparently uh, none of those counted as the mold host. They're just mold creatures. Okay, fine. Maybe maybe I'll have spawn now or something, I don't know. I mean, there's mold all over the place here and it doesn't count? Apparently it doesn't count? Okay, fine. What is this? Oh. It's done. It's just one large scale HRA. It's an easy choice, it's no choice. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the references there. Okay, well, that was special. Still doesn't help me find the mold hosts. Oh, there's a mold. There's mold up there, though. It's in there, I see it. Oh, boy. It does seem to stack. It does, okay. Good to know. How many of you are there? Not good, there's still one down there. Let's pretend I was actually really good at aiming there and that it worked out immediately. Huh, how do I get up there? I guess I can just fly. This is a hidden location as well. Yeah, makes sense. They are really sneaky with where they hide these things. I had to look up the wall and oh, I had to look up the wall and find it. Yikes. 
Okay. At least we kind of get an idea of how they want us to look for things in here now. Uh, luck and probability. Where's the next control point? Is it underneath? I think it's underneath. Uh, I came back to research and development. Or, I came back to the executive area. And it's telling me to talk to a few people. So, she has some new information from me. Is that Emily? Made up gibberish code. No, it's not. Fucking Marshall, they're CIA spies. And there's this here. Which is a jukebox token. Which I have to ask Arish about. I will do that maybe after I find the uh, the last mold host. Because I don't want to get too distracted. I'm already distracted. Let's get back to ritual. Well, looks like there's something in this lab. Yep. There's a lot of mold in this lab. Got it. Hello. There's more mold in here. Uh, in the elevator? Okay. Oh, it's down to that uh, that room I visited uh, that I visited before. Got it. This is the. Uh, it leads it to that office. You're very close by. Don't like that. Hello. Nice. You're a big guy. Bye. Have I been in here? Let's try that again. I have not been in here. Threshold Kids Proposal Initiative Proposal The Threshold Kids With the recent arrival of the blank, there are certain glaring gaps in the Bureau's ability to educate and raise a young blank. There are no other blanks for blanks to play with, and is ex and blank is expected to learn about frightening new concepts. This is about my brother because he was a child when they abducted him. Okay. Blank will require a slow, blank-friendly introduction to paranatural topics. With this in mind, allow me to introduce the Threshold Kids. A television show in which a cast of cheerful puppets explain the dangers of living at the Bureau, but also show the fun side of the paranatural. Budget would be minimal. I took a few puppet making courses at my local community center. We can even research we can have research staff build the sets, record the footage, and even do the voices. It would be good for morale, and I recommend and I guarantee Blank will respond positively to these videos. We can't expect a blank to enjoy lectures and people in lab coats, but as television has proven for years, blanks love puppets. Well, I mean, talk, clearly talking about children, or at least someone with slower uh, devel developmental growth. Personal mods are full. This is the office from before, so everyone's dipped out. There's no mold in here. I think I have clear level five. I do. There's a lot of stuff in here, though. Okay. Game of chance, yeah. Do all these lights matter? Do all these lights matter, though? What is this supposed to mean? Uh, uh... 
Okay, so, um, definitely have the clover, have the lights on, the fish has to be within less than two feet, and then the elephant, the cat, and the horseshoe are question marks. And I should stand or jump away from the table. This is clearly a puzzle of some sort. So, okay, the lights are on. Is that what you wanted? The lights are on. That's on. That's on. Is it only turning on one light at a time? I do not know. What do you say? Lucky item manifest. Bronze koi fish from China. Attracts abundance and wealth. Feng Shui. Horseshoe, Ireland. Wards off evil. Orientation is important. Heals up. Allows luck to be kept. Heals down. Luck flows outward. Ma Maneki Neko, Japan. Beckoning cat used in shops. Paw held up to beckon customers, creating luck for the business owner. Four leaf clover, Ireland. Shamrock, rare plant variation. Connections to druidic healing rituals. Elephant, China. Protection, good luck, wisdom, feng shui. Light bulb, various. Documented gambling rituals indicate luck is produced when all lights in the room are turned on. Note, effects of items to be tested. Consider investigating the orientation of the horseshoe. Also consider positioning of feng shui objects. Proximity of luck items may influence luck readings. For more information on ritual use, lucky actions to perform and to avoid, and relevance to OCD behavior, see another file. Okay. So, I played around with this a little bit previously. I think all the lights are on at this point. Let me go back out here and adjust it then. That's not luck oriented. I definitely took away the clover last time and it's back now, which is fine. I'll keep it running. Don't know what you want me to do with the koi fish. It has to be less than two feet, so I should walk right up to it with this thing. Is what I'm thinking. I don't know how I ended up getting dragged into this, but here I am. So that's less than two feet, technically, right? I don't know if that counts as two feet or not. Shit. Ow. I don't know where the fish went. Oh, here you are. I mean, you're technically still within two feet. You're not on the stand anymore, but you know, it's fine. I have no health. That's always good. The lucky horseshoe is already up. Uh, I'll do that because I don't know what... I can't really interact with the elephant. And uh, you should be waving. I feel like I've done all that I could possibly do. I'll keep this running as well. Yeah, the light is on. Light is on. Not sure if this light is on. Light is on. Okay. Light is on. I can see that. Okay, so that's within two feet. Cat is uh, waving his arms or whatever. And I need to be... I don't... I need to be outside of the square. Supposedly. Uh, okay. It's all on that. So I should somehow get it from here. I can't activate it until I'm here, though. And then stand out here. What was that? Um... Did I miss something? Okay, something's definitely happening. Something happening outside. Is that a phone?
more stuff happening out there. I'm not sure what's supposed to happen here. Well, I didn't play around with the Lucky Clover, so I'm going to try that. Because I think she actually takes it. And I do see there's a planter inside inside next to the um, next to the table itself. So maybe I can just put it here. Yep. Okay, maybe this will do it. It did! And I got an outfit. Nice. Okay. Well, I guess that's that. That was a lot of time wasted, but worth it, question mark? Still looking for mold. Would like to heal. Would be very nice. Don't like the respawning of enemies. Ah! Okay. That was not good. That made me jump. Mold was in here, got rid of it. Oh. Bathroom. Got it. I think that's the last one. That is the last one. Alright. Time to get back to Undercare. Again. a lot of abilities. I've got a lot of slam. Uh, levitation honestly doesn't really matter that much to me. I could play around with the shield, but I barely use it, so. I just I could just boost energy and health. Because everything else is working out pretty well. I think I'm going to do that. And then maybe pick up levitate. Yeah. Dr. Underhill, I finished your quest, I finally. I myself enjoying work even more. You're still concerning me a bit. I found the hosts. They won't be spreading any more mold. Well done. I'll send burn teams to sanitize the locations. I'm beginning to wonder if these hosts are originating outside the threshold in independent patches of mold growth. Well, if anyone eats it from anywhere, optimistic. then yes. Optimism is for farmers, as my mother always said. I suppose you could now return to that hiss business you all seem so concerned about. This woman has some incredible tunnel vision. Okay. Bye. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Okay, what does that leave me with now? I don't want to talk to Emily, actually. I want to talk to Arish. Arish. I still can't access the mannequin, so let's chat with Arish. Arish, let's chat. Oh my god, did she have to write everything in her made up gibberish code? After I read this. Television proposal. Based on the success of America Overnight, we would like to propose the creation of a television series that presents superstition and skeptical thought as entertainment in order to popularize these concepts among the civilian population and create less resistance in redirecting information regarding public paranatural events. We can also use a solid media outlet to test paranatural concepts on civilian audiences, seeing how they react to certain facts presented as fiction in the event that the Bureau ever decides to make certain realities public knowledge. There are various show licenses that we could purchase and reboot rather than starting from scratch. When particular property seems promising, especially considering its contact, content and tone are precisely what we're looking for. It's called Night Springs and has been off the air for a few years now. Makes sense. Oh, hey, it's the former. But people have seen the former, okay. Marshal, 
Anyway, hey, Arish. I found this token. Any idea what it does? Ah, that is a jukebox token. Little bastards turn up in the weirdest places, like bad pennies. The rangers use them to activate an old object of power. A jukebox, I assume. Does it have any good songs? Nope, just the one record. Hey, be careful turning it on, though. When it's playing, you get a free trip to the formation. To the, the what now? That sounds ominous. Why does it send you there? Uh, the Bureau has been wondering that for years. I mean, it's just a pile of rocks built by God knows who, but... Well, researchers have confirmed it's in the same threshold as the quarry. No one's ever been able to map a physical route to the formation for maintenance. So it's in the quarry? You just don't know where? Pretty much. We only send in annual expeditions to the formation now. Checkups, Salvador calls them. This year's team went in the day the hiss arrived. Come to think of it, the song should have brought back hours ago. I can go in and take a look. I'd appreciate that. The jukebox is kept just past the security booth over there. Just put in the token and enjoy the ride. Okay. Sounds good. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Fair enough. I respect that. Uh, put the token in the jukebox. Jukebox tokens can be constructed. Luck out there. Yes, but what does it what does it do? How does it work? What do I use it for? Just through security here, you say. I will also open this since I now have clearance level five. Loot and music, it looks like. And also notes, I'll do that. Thank you. I don't need to play with the radio. America overnight results. The America Overnight program has operated successfully for over blank years, originally designed to assist in providing disinformation to the naturally skeptical population of America. It has additionally led to the, the, to the discovery of numerous AWEs and altered materials by allowing civilians to call in and report their experiences to, with the paranatural. That's a good plan. Um, in fact, America Overnight alerted the Bureau of blank and blank in the first year of operation alone. In this report, the investigation sector have cataloged and categorized each episode of America overnight that has resulted in a successful bureau investigation in order to help AWE occurrence analysis. The more blank results of Night Springs has also been cataloged in a separate report. Refer to file blank for full report. I've got it. Okay. Jukebox. Hello. Ah, I've actually uh, seen this before because I went into this area previously, but I didn't know what it was for. Undertake expeditions in Quarry Site Beta to earn unique mods. Completing each of the four objectives will dismantle the formation to reveal the rewards waiting inside. Oh, so this is just... This is literally just, hey, you want to do a dungeon? That seems a bit mad to me. This is Lynn Salvador, head of Bureau Security. I'm making a formal security order due to the incident in April. Case number 21HQ593. Improper use of the jukebox altered item led to two fatalities. We believe a pair of agents used the jukebox to travel to the quarry threshold and engage in inappropriate workplace behavior. Huh. An expedition team found them decomposing Yikes. in the formation base a week later. At least we found out the jukebox doesn't bring corpses back when the song ends. I'm having the jukebox placed in a secure location in the executive sector. It should never have been accessible to low clearance staff in the first place. The new location security and proximity to a high traffic area will prevent misuse while still allowing for expedition teams to access it when required. See me for any further details. That makes sense. Makes sense. Low level clearance, people don't take it as seriously, they go and mess hey, around, etc, etc. Why do you still have a point on you, though? I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing, even got rookie status. Anyway, I don't know what a ranger is. My own ranger squad was a great bunch. There was six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hedges, Am I gonna have to find all of these people for you? They were supposed to get back from an expedition yesterday, in the Beers and Wings plan. Problem is... They weren't here when Darling handed out the HRAs. So yes, and you're telling me to have to find protecting them. them from the hiss. You see, they prep for the worst, but I think that we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck, and I really don't want the hiss to get them. Could you find them for me? 
Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for them, Arish. And I won't let them stay his. Okay, another side quest. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Uh, let's change outfits. I'm kind of bored of this one. How do I change outfits? I thought All I was right. at a control point. Yes, outfits. Golden suit. Okay, I'll be honest. Civilian looks a lot cooler. A lot cooler. I kind of want to just stick with that one. But let's just change it up a little bit. Uh, I will also craft some tokens and I'll try to do the hardest level one. So... It just uses source, so I'll do a set of three. Um, I'll also equip some extra... Not H... Mm, I kind of want the shield barrage stuff. So... I'll start working on shield. Enough points, that's fine. Alright, let's get in there. I thought I had five. Do I not have five tokens? I have eight tokens. I guess I have to do tier one first. That's fine, I don't I don't use shatter. So this is like a dungeon run, more or less. And you have 25 minutes to do it? What the heck? Investigate and clear... And clear the four island sites, okay? I think I'm gonna do this, like, off-screen a lot of the time. I'll do this first one on-screen. And maybe, like, the first one of each harder difficulty later, but... Right now, I can't imagine this is what we want to uh, spend a lot of time recording, shall we say. So, what do you mean with the his, um, his corrupted material, precisely? Like that stuff? It's still gone. It's still going. I could burn it. I don't just shoot it. What, just send it into the fire? Okay. Send it into the fire! down here. I was gonna throw it at it, but I accidentally grabbed the actual hiss, hiss thing, so. Did that not count? There we go. I think that's the last one up there. Nice throw. Alright. This is the formation here, right? Unmapped area. That's helpful. That's helpful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is up there. How do I return to it? Just fly? Alright, I guess that's fl that's it. Fly.
Okay. Area two, please. I don't know how I feel about this segment, like these segments in general, kind of break it up a lot. And the game itself, honestly, is a little bit on the trailing side as far as pacing goes. Recover biometric locks from dead rangers, okay, that's fine. Just gotta find a few dead bodies. I hear beeps. You're skeletonized. You're done done. Gimme. Why does it take me this long to get the items? Okay. Help me shoot them, please. got a Gatling gun, but that's different. Okay. Ow! Ow! Okay, dying. Don't like that. Okay. Ow. Still healing. That's okay. Ow. Not doing well. I should run. I should keep running. Keep running. Where the heck is the healing thing? Oh crap. I'm gonna die. Don't like that. Okay, I'm not doing well. Particularly because of the healing. Ow. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. That was annoying as hell. Actually just annoying more than anything else. It does not help uh, what I was saying earlier about this, um, the pacing being kind of slow and a little dull, to be honest.
Maybe I just got unlucky there. But no, I think they're gonna keep spawning. That might be good. Uh, still need to clear out my weapon mods though. Fight. 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 Don't need that either. Goodbye to level 3 mods. I don't care about you anymore. Alright. I think I left a level 2 in there by accident, but it's fine. Okay, how many more annoying, uh, annoying enemies are going to spawn in? A lot of them. Got it. Every time I do this? Well, it had to happen. I just sacrificed my health and then I died to the missile. I don't really appreciate how enemies spawn every time you do this though. Like I clear I specifically made it a point to clear out the other enemies and it didn't count. I'm gonna die. Okay, so that wasn't that bad. I'm rapidly running out of time though. Please let me just get the item. Holy shit. You know 
what? Just help me. One more. I mean, I could just leave, right? I've already gotten the items. I can just leave. Yeah, no one said I have to fight this. I have found that it is not worth my time. I also don't have much time left. I have nine minutes to clear the other two. That's not good. Not good at all. What do you want me to do here? Retrieve the lost specimen data. Okay. Now what does that entail? It looks like a boss area. Excavation site. Got it. What is this? Eliminate the ways of his. Great, that sounds like fun. Ways of enemies! The most creative of obstacles. Okay, you're still alive somehow. Don't like that. Good. What? Okay. Just keep running. Where is this guy? Come on. Are we clear yet, or do I still have one missing? Squad Captain Lopez, reporting on Expedition 17. At the formation now, the previous visit. The link detectors are still standing. One arch has a light flashing, so we're gonna give the area once over. Then we'll head back. Okay. I'm guessing that didn't work out. Help me out. Still missing one? Hello.
at that game, mister. I'm not one-shotting these guys, that's a little annoying. Who's still alive? Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna clear this in time. Nope. When I fail this, I'm actually going to, uh... Just cut ahead to when I actually successfully do it, because I'm not going to make you rewatch all this again. Because somehow I still have to clear one more, and these take forever. I don't think I'm going to clear it in the three minutes allotted to me. Just a hunch. Probably one of the plates. So just stand in it. appreciate that they're healing. That's annoying as hell. Okay. Where the heck is... Three, though. Probably that one. That's not one at all, what the hell? So now the struggle is having to find one. That's bad, that's terrible. I'm gonna lose my time just looking for it. Just have to get uh, get back there now in the next minute. I swear to God, I have no health for this either. I have 50 seconds. Just a little stress. Are you shitting me? Seriously.
Oh, I'm not gonna beat this in 20 seconds, game. Yeah, 19 seconds to do it. Great, thanks guys. So it turns out that the quest was actually DLC, um, and even though I failed it, the mission that it had originally assigned me still counts as completed. So because it's DLC, and honestly it's not a lot of fun and it's just a time sink, I'm not going to bother. And I'm just going to move on. But I am actually going to end this episode here. I hope that you had some fun with this episode. And that you're doing well wherever you are. This has been Cars with Control. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.